Today, I set off to climb Mexico's highest peak, the Pico de Orizaba. Our journey starts now. Do you think we can make it in 12 hours? Maybe less. Less? Yeah. It's the third tallest mountain in all of North America, standing at 18 and a half thousand feet. Very steep. Why the hell do I do this? And I've definitely underestimated the challenge. No idea how it's there. This video is sponsored by the North Face. Honestly feeling a little bit nervous about this. <laughs> because the last time that I tried to do something competitive with, you know, running and climbing, I quit. I couldn't do it. 35 kilometers, 20 miles, and a lot of uphill. I feel like my legs could do it, but the rest of my body is like screaming at me to stop. I've just been feeling really weak. It's best to work out differently. So after I quit the Wonderland Trail, I didn't run at all for three months, at all. And you know, that's pretty big for me because I consider myself to be a runner. So I'm sitting here today thinking, <laughs> what if it happens again? What if I quit again? What if I can't do it again? What will that mean for my identity, for who I am, you know? This is the morning. We're about to head out into the mountain, but before that, I get to meet my guide for the trip. Hola. Hola. It's going to be just the two of us climbing Mexico's tallest peak. Hello, everybody. I'm Juan Mendoza. I'm guy yeah. for this mountain, for all Mexico, too. So I'm going with Eva today. Before setting off, I wanted to ask Juan some questions about safety and just how difficult this climb would be. So I've been doing a little bit of calculating and I figured out that the Pico de Orizaba is almost the same height as Kilimanjaro, the tallest mountain in Africa. So how do those two mountains compare in terms of difficulty? Many people come from Kilimanjaro yeah. and after making this mountain, all people say it's more difficult this mountain than Kilimanjaro. So what would you say are like the most dangerous things about climbing the Pico de Orizaba? The glacier was icy and the people came they sell. This is very dangerous. Without a guide. Not the guide. Also the labyrinth. The labyrinth. The labyrinth is difficult. You need to, to know very well. What is the labyrinth? That sounds pretty scary. <laughs> the labyrinth is part of the mountain uh -huh. before to the glacier. This is why called labyrinth because it's too much rocks. Wow. So you need to, to look very well. Okay. So the problem is not to up. The problem mm. is when you down. Right. If the clouds is there, mm. everything is the same. Yeah. But you know your way in the labyrinth, right? <laughs> I have uh, more than 300 times. 300 times? On the summit. Yeah. Oh my God. Only summit. And how many times have you attempted? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'm in good hands. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I need to show you something. Just to kind of lift the mood a little bit. Hi. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> you are so cute. Look at these precious little puppies! Hello! Hello, little babies! <laughs> Did you guys reckon that Vilk could use a friend? <sighs> Very tempting. <laughs> All right, let's get going. Getting to the base camp of Pico de Orizaba is an adventure in its own right. You leave the remote town of Tlachichuca and soon get on a dirt track that's only passable in a 4x4. I wonder how Odyssey would do in these conditions. Dust, rocks, the air becoming thinner the higher up you go. This road winds all the way up to 4,200 meters above sea level, all the way to base camp. This place feels desolate. We're above the tree line. Here, oxygen levels are already much lower than at sea level. Only the most hardy creatures and plants can survive out here long term. It feels inhospitable, unwelcoming to human life. All around this base camp, there's a lot of reminders of just how fragile human life can be, especially, especially out here in the mountains. So there's quite a few um, of these plaques here, commemorating the lives lived and lost out here on this mountain. And I always find it really important to 
read these plaques to kind of remind myself of the beauty and the fragility of life and the fact that the mountain must always be respected. Always. I'm just about to enter the Piedra Grande hut, which is our home for tonight. So this is a pretty big hut where everybody stays the night before the climb. As always, a gentle mental nudge. Have I got everything? Have I forgotten anything? You know, everybody's always asking me about the gear that I use for like all my outdoors adventures. So I will present you some of it later on in this video. But for now, I just need to figure out this entire mess. Here is my backpack. This is the only thing I can take up the mountain. Got a climbing harness, a sleeping pad, and a sleeping bag, which I still haven't received from my guides. Gloves, one pair of undergloves, one pair of big waterproof, weatherproof gloves. Gaiters, which you put over your boots and your trousers to make sure that you don't get anything going into your boots while you're trekking. Waterproof pants. Oh, I love these. You put those over these babies, which are fleece lined. Thermals, a buff, a hat for underneath your helmet, and a normal warm hat. Two pairs of socks, one light pair of socks, one very thick and warm pair of socks. Sunscreen and a comb, because <laughs> I'm vain like that. <laughs> and a hand sanitizer. A spoon, a cup, and a bowl. And I'm gonna put these in with my one dehydrated meal for the entire trip. Helmet, and a whole bunch of batteries for my cameras and my drones so that I can continue recording for you guys. <laughs> Head torch, very important because most of our ascent will be in complete darkness. A couple of water bottles and a thermos. Jacket, boots, drone and cameras, and a whole bunch of snacks. A lot of snacks. And one big, thick, warm jacket for the summit attempt. And one more jacket. This is a rain and waterproof jacket for when it's not super cold, but you need protection from the wind. So as you guys already know, this adventure is sponsored by the North Face, which I am super, super excited about because come on, it is the North Face. I've been a huge fan of the brand since I started getting into the outdoors about five years ago because their quality is just top notch, it's unbeatable, and let's face it, all of their stuff is super, super cute. And they have a huge choice of gear too, so I know that I can always find something relevant for whatever adventure I dream up. I'm just about to start climbing Mexico's tallest mountain. So it is a demanding and cold hike, but it is not too extreme. So. I've chosen a few products that are so versatile that I know that I can use them on both big mountain hikes and in my daily life. And those are this thermal ball jacket, the Denali jacket, and these, oh my God, I need to work on my flexibility. These super cute meals. Anyway, let's go over there and I'll show you in more detail. This feels like a runway. How do models, is that how models, how do models walk? <laughs> Number one, the Denali jacket. So wearing this jacket honestly feels a little bit like wearing a really nice cozy hug. A hug that's made from 100% recycled fleece. I love it because it has a super relaxed feel, it is cozy and warm, and even has a water repellent finish, which is pretty cool. Honestly, I have been living in this thing for an entire week now. Number two, the Thermable Traction V Mules. Now, let me put this out there, I hate slippers. I wouldn't wear them. But these mules are more like a cross between really cozy socks and like super lightweight sports shoes. And I love how functional they are. So on the inside, ta-da! They've got this super soft, super warm, thermable eco lining on the inside. And these rubber soles actually have really great traction, whether you're at a mountain base camp or taking your dog for a morning walk. You are solid, my friend. And number three, the thermable jacket. I love the style of this jacket and I absolutely adore this color. It is so cute. But it's also really practical because the advanced insulation done on this jacket actually means that you're getting a product that's really warm but super lightweight. I mean, let me show you. It packs down to this. It's a ball, a thermal ball. I mean, I'm not sure if that's why they actually called it the thermal ball jacket, but I'm just gonna go with it. 
Oh, and all the fabric and all the fill on this jacket are 100% recycled. So make sure you check out the North Face before heading off on your next adventure. Speaking of adventure, Pico de Orizaba is the tallest mountain in Mexico, but not only that, she's also the third tallest mountain in all of North America. They do have another name for this mountain. In the indigenous language Nahuatl, she's called Citlal Tepetl, the Star Mountain. Reaching higher towards heavens than any other peak for thousands of miles in every direction. This is a pretty serious mountain, and you have to acclimatize to the high altitude before you climb it. I spent the previous day getting my body used to it, hiking all the way up to over 4,000 meters. If you don't acclimatize, you risk altitude sickness. Okay, I have to say, I'm feeling a little bit woozy, because we are pretty high up. The higher you climb, the less oxygen your body gets. At an altitude of 5,600 meters, which is the summit, your lungs take in less than 50% of the oxygen you'd get at sea level. You struggle to breathe. Your head starts spinning, your body crazed by the sudden change. Altitude sickness can be fatal. Explain us the, the route that we're going to be taking. <laughs> okay, so we start here yeah. on the shelter. Mm -hmm. We get to the aqueduct the labyrinths, wow. and after that, all the glacier, and get to the summit. So the shelter has completely filled up. There's loads of people everywhere. And I have a feeling like they're not gonna go to sleep anytime soon. But as for me, I really just wanna get a lot of rest. We're waking up at 1 a.m. and then starting the climb at 1.30. So I just really wanna make sure that I get like at least six or seven hours of sleep and it is 5 p.m. right now. This is probably the earliest I've ever gone to bed. <laughs> but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. This here is my little nest. Very nice and cozy. And um, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow at 1 a.m. Okay, looks like we're ready to go. Everybody's left already. We're the last ones out. Oh, we're not the last ones out. <laughs> All right, ready to go. Our journey starts now. Do you think we can make it in 12 hours? Maybe less. Less? Yeah. Oh my God. All right. <laughs> high five. Let's do this. Climbing in the dark almost felt like a blessing. When you can't see the giant mountain ahead of you, it's easier to block out the magnitude of the challenge. Walking blind, you just take one step at a time. And that step is all that matters. A step at a time and one hour passes. We enter the labyrinth and I follow Juan's footsteps closely. It's times like this where I really ask myself, why the hell do I do this? Two hours. Three. Very steep. Very, very steep. And I can definitely feel the altitude. Feeling a little bit woozy. We've navigated the labyrinth and we're about to enter the steep, icy glacier. This is the start of the glacier. Mm -hmm. Apparently this is the most challenging part. It has been pretty challenging so far. So this is the point where we put on our crampons and uh, start climbing up this very icy glacier. So crampons here are a total pain in the ass to put on and to walk in, but they could save your life, so it's good to wear them. <laughs> Juan and I are now attached to each other by a rope because there are deep gashes in the ice here called crevasses. Being attached by the rope makes the climb safer for us so we don't fall inside. I'm pretty high altitude, so I'm feeling a little bit, a little bit woozy and definitely very, very tired. It's hard. Four hours. Just put one foot in front of the other. Come on, 
Five hours. We're at well over 5,000 meters above sea level. The sun is beginning to rise. We are so much higher than any other point on the horizon. It feels like we're alone. Whoa, look at that. The shadow of the mountain. No idea how it was there. But this makes it all worth it. Six. Six hours. We're just tiny specks, but each of us is here for a very unique reason. It's right there. We're tiny specks, but each of us here is brimming with hope. How long did it take us to get here? Six hours, 20 minutes. Normally, people, it's eight hours. You know what, I'm so happy that I did this because getting to the summit of this really big mountain I feel like gave me back some of the confidence that I lost attempting to run the Wonderland Trail a few months back, you know. So, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Well, that's just it, isn't it? Sometimes the hardest thing is just taking that first step. Just giving it a shot even if you're scared to death that things might not work out. True bravery? isn't in the lack of fear. It's all about feeling the fear and doing it anyway. Thanks again to The North Face for sponsoring this video.